been reading a Dharma talk by Tai John, who takes the terms emotional intelligence and moral intelligence and interprets them in line with the Buddhist teachings. And it's interesting how he divides things up. Emotional intelligence he aligns with discernment. In other words, seeing what motive you have for your thinking and where different emotions lead, emotions of passion, aversion, and delusion, which, as the sutta we just chanted pointed out, like fires burning everything you look at and listen to, smell, taste, touch, think about. And it's the discernment in seeing these emotions as fire. Realizing you want to put the fires out. That's how discernment is related to emotional intelligence. As for moral intelligence, you might have thought that he would align it with virtue. And he does, but in a deeper sense he aligns it with concentration. This is a theme that goes way back in the forest tradition. There's a Dharma textbook that came out in the early 20th century. It was printed by the ecclesiastical hierarchy in Bangkok, and they identified virtue as being an affair of body and speech. Right there is where John Munn disagreed. He says, well, if it's just body and speech, then it's just ritual. But virtue is not just a matter of ritual, it's a matter of the heart, because the heart is what gives the orders. And if you're going to train in virtue, you have to train the heart. And this is how concentration is related to virtue. In other words, externally you may follow the precepts, but if your heart is still killing and stealing and having illicit sex, okay, then it's not a virtuous heart. You have to bring its preoccupations in the line which is what we do when we concentrate. We use mindfulness to remind ourselves that this is where we want to stay and we're not going to wander off. Why? Because we know if we wander off there's going to be trouble. If we allow the mind to wander into thoughts of greed, aversion, delusion, or sensuality, ill will, harmfulness, we're going to suffer and eventually other people will suffer too. So the reason we control the heart here, bring it into line with the choosing an object to stay on. It's a moral issue. We don't usually think about it, but that's what it is. And John Lee makes a comparison. He says if your mind is killing off your goodness, okay, you've broken the first precept. If you're stealing the bad points of other people to think about, that's breaking the second precept. If you're thinking about all kinds of sensual issues, you're breaking the third. If you're lying to yourself that you're actually here concentrating, that's a fourth. And as for the fifth precept, that's the drowsiness. The weaving back and forth in your meditation, finally falling asleep on the side of the road. It's a nice series of images. But it's making a very serious point, which is that keeping the mind here is a moral issue. Because if it starts wandering off, then pretty soon it's going to lead your physical actions and your verbal actions to wander off the course as well. A lot of times we in the West don't like to hear about morality, because we associate it with arbitrary rules, or rules that seem arbitrary, and we feel like we're confined. But if you think morality more of as an issue of harmlessness, you're trying to find a happiness that's harmless. It's not going to harm yourself. It's not going to harm other people. That's the moral dimension to our practice here. So even on days when the meditation is not going well, where it seems to be a constant struggle, at the very least you're not giving in. We keep bringing the mind back, bringing it back, trying to develop skillful qualities. I was reading a meditation guide recently. 
starts out by saying meditation is not a matter of giving rise to particular mind states, it's just uncovering the natural goodness and peace that's already there. Which is pretty appalling when you think about it. If your minds were naturally peaceful, why would you have to train them? And if somehow they had gotten peaceful and then you'd forgotten your true good nature, your true peaceful nature, that means when you get back to it, you're not, you're not going to be able to stay there. You'll forget it again. Keep in mind that we really are trying to develop good, skillful qualities in the mind. And it takes work, but it's pleasant work, and it's noble work as well. And this is the side of morality that we tend to forget. There's a nobility to behaving in a way that's harmless. There's a dignity to behaving in a way that's harmless. Keep your mind in harmless states. That gives a dignity and a nobility to your mind as well. So as I said, even on days when the meditation is not going well, at least remind yourself you're involved in a moral pursuit, a dignified pursuit, a noble pursuit. And if it is going well, maintain it. Don't get complacent. There's that line of thought that says, well, I've stacked up all this merit and all this goodness. I can afford a little slack time. That doesn't work. Because a slack time in the mind starts leading to slack behavior. Then you have to fight back to get back to where you were. Once the mind is in good shape, try to maintain it there. It's a lot easier to maintain it when it is in good shape than when it's lost it and you have to struggle to bring it back. And you do, when you develop this virtue and morality of the mind, it becomes more and more your normal state. In fact, that's what the Taijans like to translate virtue as. In fact, it's typical throughout Thailand. Virtue is normalcy. It's your normal state. You can have good virtue and you can have bad virtue. Your normalcy can be bad as well. What we're trying to do is develop a good normalcy. That this does become the normal state of mind, centered, solid, secure. When you're in that state, you can see clearly what should be done. And you've got the strength to do it, and you can see clearly why you want to do it. You realize that morality is not just an issue of rules, it's an issue of wanting to be harmless. Of dealing with some of your deeper aspirations, your more noble aspirations. So let that thought be there in the back of your mind. Whenever you need inspiration in the practice, there it is. You're developing moral intelligence.